Hello, I'm Master Marslander, and today we're talking about two very similarly priced and in many ways very similarly performing wireless earphones, but they take very different approaches in their individual styles. Today we have the Moondrop Ultrasonic and the Roselsa Earfree i5. Both of these come in at about $75 a piece, and they're often on sale. And at that price, they just kind of might be the best bang for your buck when it comes to this true wireless earphone category. Let's start with the Moondrop Ultrasonics. Look at these little dudes. They're super freaking cool looking. This is a very kind of like Neo Tokyo kind of aesthetic, and I think it looks really, really cool. Very kind of Evangelion-esque in some ways. I don't know, I think they're super, super neat. They're very, very cool. They incorporate a one balanced armature and 13 millimeter dynamic driver architecture, support Bluetooth 5.3 and codecs SBC, AAC, LDAC, and LC3. Their battery life is around six hours of playtime, which is reduced a little bit when you have active noise cancellation turned on. And yes, they do have active noise cancellation. We'll talk a little bit later about how well that ANC actually performs, but yes, active noise canceling wireless earbuds here. With the included charging station here, the little carrying case, which also follows this kind of Neo Tokyo aesthetic, you get an additional 18 hours of charge time. But I'm not a huge fan of this case. It looks really neat. I think it looks super cool. I like all the little details and accents on it. It is charging by USB 3 here, but I have some problems with it. I have some problems with this freaking case. Number one, this lid here is, you, you, I'm, I'm gonna show you how this works. You put in your, earbud, your earbuds here, your little earphones. They just go in there great, very nice. And you close it, you see what just happened there? You close it and it's supposed to lock on this teeny tiny little locking hinge right here. The problem is, as you just saw, it's extremely finicky. Sometimes it just, it just doesn't wanna freaking close. I don't, I don't really understand it. Oh, that's really, it's really annoying. <laughs> I find it very obnoxious. The lid will not stay shut. So that's, that's one little point knocked off on this carrying case. The other problem I have is that the earphones themselves are extremely difficult to get out of this case. You wouldn't think so, but outside of like bashing them against your hand and them falling out like that, it's a real pain in the ass to actually get these things out. You can sort of slide them out, but it, it, it just, it's not very, it just, they flop everywhere. They fly around. It's just not, it's not a very easy case to get your earphones out of. Either I'm sliding them out and they're falling all over the place, or I have to pinch them in weird ways. And it's just, it, I don't, I don't really care for how these fit into the case. While it looks really, really nice, they, they're just a pain in the ass to get out. And then the other problem with this case, which is the, I think probably the biggest problem with it is it's actually, two pieces put together. This whole lid situation is an outer shell of the actual charging station. The charging station is this, as you can see, it's a block that you insert into this kind of outer shell so that it has a closing lid. I'm not entirely sure, oh my God, I'm not entirely sure why they decided to do that. I don't know why they didn't just make this whole thing the charging base but yes, the lid is actually an optional thing that you slide it into. And I would show you that, except, and again, this is the biggest problem with this case. Once you insert the charging base into this outer shell, it is damn near impossible to get it out. I have done it before, but it was a nightmare. I had to basically get like a pen or a screwdriver with a very flat, non-damaging end and push as hard as I can right here to get this thing to push out because it will not, it will not come out. It is in there forever. I mean, I don't really get it. I really don't. It's not, I guess, the worst thing ever because why wouldn't you wanna use the lid here? Why wouldn't you wanna use the outer shell? But I, again, I asked the question, why was the outer shell not just incorporated as part of the charging station. I just, I don't really understand it. And it's a little frustrating because yeah, it's not, oh, I can't get this thing to freaking close. Oh my God. It's just, it's not as cool looking as it is. It function wise is a little bit of a nightmare, but I digress. 
it does still at the very minimum, bare minimum, achieve this cool kind of, you know, Japanese high tech aesthetic. And for that, it does look very cool. And then in almost complete contrast, we have the ear free i fives, which are very, very simple by design. They're a very kind of minimalist sort of design, very simple, not flashy at all. And in a way kind of makes them almost feel a little bit more futuristic, less kind of a retro future and more of a chromey, glossy, clean future kind of aesthetic. They just have this re these really nice angular designs that are lovely. They're just lovely. Very simple looking, kind of look like your basic standard, almost Apple earbuds sort of aesthetic, but with some nice little, again, angles and lines and they look, they look nice and simple. The Earfree i5s have 10 millimeter dynamic drivers. They support Bluetooth 5.3, codecs in LDAC, AAC, MSBC, and standard SBC. They have a battery life of around 10 hours of playtime, which again is a little bit shorter when you have active noise cancellation turned on. Yes, they are also ANC enabled active noise canceling wireless earphones. And the charging case adds an additional 50 hours of charge. So battery life, they're already kind of ahead of the ultrasonic. They are also IPX5 water resistant, which just basically is enough to ensure that a little bit of sweat isn't going to damage them, but you certainly don't wanna be submerging these into any bodies of water. And then as for the case, very, very simple. Not as, you know, maybe interesting looking and, you know, retro future-esque as the moon drops, but it's very elegant looking. It has this nice satiny matte finish to the metal here. Yes, it is metal. And it's just very minimalist. It's very nice and extremely easy to use. These earphones, very, very, without any complaints from me, fit in here just like that. And they come out just like that. It may, it may not be as exciting of a charging case and carrying case as you get out of the moon drops in terms of just the aesthetic style of it. But man, does convenience matter? Because this is so much easier to use, so much easier to operate. It's also a lot, a lot less chunky than the moon drops. As you can see, yeah, the moon drops have a much bigger profile than the ear freeze here. Um, the lid already popped open. Anyway. I, I get it. It's it's simple. It's it's maybe nothing special, but man, it works so well. I really like this case, and I really wish that the moon drops were as easy to use as this. It's a sleek, solid, minimalistic style, easy to open, easy to shut, and the earphones are easy to remove. So this is a win. Both units come with their pretty much proprietary app as well, starting with the moon drops here. It's pretty basic stuff, but we'll go ahead and go over it really quickly so you can get a quick tour of how things work. Top of the menu, we have our ANC settings. You have transparent, noise reduction, and close. Transparent's pretty straightforward. It is a transparent mode so that you can hear everything around you. Noise reduction is full ANC. So maxed out ANC is actually the middle option, noise reduction. Close is kind of a half ANC option where you do have some active noise cancellation, but it's mostly just for taking out some kind of generic wind sound, wind noise, whereas noise reduction is full ANC that eliminates more noise frequencies. ANC button settings is a little bit confusing, but basically this is just things that you can enable or disable for the touch controls on the ultrasonics. So if I want to, right now I have ANC on, off, and TP both all enabled for the touch controls. So when I use the touch controls, I can turn ANC on and off and so on. But if I don't want my touch controls to have any effect on that, I could turn those off. And then similarly down here at the ANC key sorting, this is just basically the priority list. You can change what you want to have priority on when you're using the, the uh, touch controls. Going into function settings, this one's important because this is where you're going to enable or disable LDAC. Gain setting is exactly what it says. It is three different options of adding gain or volume, I guess, to your earphone. And then LDAC is also pretty straightforward, enabling LDAC or disabling LDAC. Highly recommend you enable LDAC to have the best audio quality, but this is where you would do that. Next, we have the Tune EQ. 
You don't have an option, unfortunately, to make custom EQ profiles in here, but you have a small list of profiles to choose from. But yes, you can play around with your EQ options here to uh, more or less achieve a sound that you really prefer. And then of course you have your firmware updates and your user guide, and that's it. That, that's really all there is here. It's pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Then going over here to the EarFree i5, they have their own app as well, which is very similar, but notably actually tells you the battery life you have left on the unit, which surprisingly the moon drop didn't, didn't show. So that's interesting. If we scroll down, we'll find our noise cancellation options. Kind of more of the same here. We have our noise cancellation, wind noise, normal and transparency mode. Noise cancellation being full ANC, wind noise being kind of a middle setting ANC. Normal is ANC turned off and transparency is exactly what it says. A transparent mode so that, that uses the outboard microphones to kind of get a sampling of your environment so that you can hear things around you. Supermaster EQ, you only get four. You get four profiles to choose from for your EQ setting. No option to do custom EQ, kind of disappointed about that. And these are all pretty basic EQ settings. Notably, you see a hi-fi setting here. I did not like the hi-fi setting. I don't think it does a very good job. Of the four here, I think pop is really the only one I can kind of recommend. It is a very fee-shaped sort of profile, but the others sounded way too kind of artificially tinny for my liking. But you know, if you need to, you can go ahead and play around with these and see which sound profile you tend to prefer for whatever genre of music that you were listening to. And again, we do have a lossless audio protocol option in here to turn LDAC on or to use the AAC SBC. Again, I highly recommend you enable LDAC to get the best audio quality from your Bluetooth. Pretty important. There is a game mode for lower latency if you wanna do some gaming with these. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. I don't bother using it. And the EarFreeze do support dual device connections that you can have the earphones connected to multiple devices, not just the phone. I can have it connected to my phone and the PC at the same time if I want to, to get samplings of different sort of sources, but that is an option there. And then similarly, you can customize your touch controls a little bit here. Go in here and you can decide how you want the touch controls to behave, and you can have it do left controls, right controls, or both. Lab features. This is basically enabling or disabling both your touch controls and your in-ear detection. And then also similarly to the ultrasonic, you can decide what features are actually being used when you are using your touch controls. So prioritize them or disable them however you want. You also choose what kind of language you want to be using and you can do your firmware updates right here from the app as well. You notice I'm in the earphone control tab. These other two tabs, I'm not even gonna bother showing. They're basically just a app store for this particular app and your own personal profile information for the app. When turning features on and off or turning the earphones themselves on or off, both do have their own sort of AI voice assistant that speaks to you when things are happening to say like, oh, power on, power off and so forth. The ear free i5 has, some, has a pretty standard generic female voice. Whereas the moon drop here, <laughs> the ultrasonics have this super hyper cutesy anime girl that talks to you, which is, Kind of jarring every time I hear it, but it's it, it's it's it fits the aesthetic, it fits the theme, and I guess most interesting is when you are enacting or disabling ANC. This is pretty standard over here with the ear free, where it just kind of says ANC on, ANC off, transparency mode, so on. But with the moon drops here, your little anime waifu like makes little sound effects for you to deter to give you a hint of what ANC is. I think with ANC turned off, it's like. Eh. With ANC turned on, it goes shh. It, it's just weird. It's weird. It's kind of kind of fun themed, I guess, but also just jarring. It's it's pretty jarring. But yeah, it's worth I suppose to mention that with the moon drops, you do get something a little bit different than just your bog standard kind of female AI voice. You get a little waifu in here, so <laughs> you could determine if that's worth any extra value to you. So now let's go ahead and put these things in and discuss how they kind of fit and the comfort of these individual wireless earphones. The ultrasonics here are extremely lightweight. These are very kind of light plasticky kind of shell that they use. So they're super, super lightweight. And as you can see, they just kind of peek out like your normal sort of wireless earbud, but they do have that sort of, again, aesthetically designed 
Neo Tokyo retro future look to them. So they look pretty cool and they fit actually pretty, pretty well. They're not the tightest fit. I do have to kind of finagle them every once in a while. They do, especially when I'm talking, if I have to speak for any reason, like I'm doing now, they do have a tendency to kind of slip out just a little bit and I have to kind of reposition them, but they're otherwise pretty good. In terms of the overall comfort, especially over longer listening sessions, they're decent, but they do have a tendency to get a little bit fatiguing for me just because of their standard ergonomic shape. It doesn't particularly work great for my ear shape, but your mileage may vary. Otherwise, pretty good, pretty standard fit and comfort. Passive sound isolation is decent with uh, active noise cancellation turned off. And yeah, it's, it's a decent fit, a decent fit overall. Going over to the ear-free i5s, they're also pretty light. They feel a bit more substantial than the ultrasonics do, but they are for all intent and purposes about the same maybe in terms of weight, but they feel a lot better in my ear. The overall shape of these is just a little bit more ergonomic for my ear canal. Again, your mileage may vary, but I'm able to wear these a lot more comfortably for a lot longer. These are not nearly as fatiguing to me as the ultrasonics are, but that again, that's probably just me, but they feel nice. They have a bit of a cool touch to them. I so I guess the material that's being used for the shells, they just feel kind of nice and cool on my ears. Not that, not that the moon drops feel warm on my ears. They just feel kind of like a cheaper sort of plastic, I guess, than the, Ear freeze here. Ear freeze here just have a little bit more premium feeling build quality to their shell, if not particularly, you know, as interesting of a design of a shell. But yes, the fit and comfort is great. My passive sound isolation is just as good, if maybe not a tiny bit better than the moon drops, but they're certainly, again, at least for me, more comfortable to wear for longer listening sessions. Now to talk a little bit about the active noise cancellation for both of these. The ANC is actually pretty freaking great. Really, really solid. The ultrasonics here do a really fantastic job of eliminating a lot of ambient noise, particularly stuff like wind noise or engine hums. It does a significant job. My room here with all my fans and my PCs and electronics that are on and humming, completely silent. I can't hear them at all. So when it comes to lower frequencies, it does an excellent, excellent job. It's really only the higher notes, the higher frequencies that still kind of peek through a little bit, but they are still definitely muffled and veiled. So it does, they do excellent, excellent job for, you know, kind of your travel sort of ANC needs and desires with only, again, just sort of the higher pitch, higher frequencies that actually get through the ANC. But otherwise, ANC is really surprisingly good, genuinely very, very good. Then going over here to the ear free i5s, more of the same. They're pretty much on par in terms of their ANC performance. They both do a really excellent job of eliminating background ambient hums and noises, especially in those lower frequencies. I would say that maybe the ear freeze here cancel out just a little bit more in terms of the high frequencies, but otherwise they're like really edge to edge, really close to each other in terms of their ANC performance. Genuinely excellent, some of the best ANC I have heard from a wireless Bluetooth earphone, especially in this price range. So both of them do an excellent job. Now let's go ahead and talk sound performance, starting with the ultrasonic. The sound settings I had for the ultrasonic were LDAC enabled, ANC turned on at maximum. And then the EQ I used for sound testing was the, the default setting for the club sound profile. Starting with the bass range, the bass extension is actually pretty decent. You get what feels like some pretty nice impactful sub bass. It's maybe not the most resolving sub bass. It's maybe not the deepest extending sub bass before a wireless uh, earphone like this. The sub bass performance is actually decent. It's you get a little bit of sub bass in here, which is pretty impressive for a Bluetooth earphone like this. Sub bass is something that usually is an afterthought for fully wireless earphones, but the Moondrop do provide you a little bit of extra extension to get into that sub bass. And the mid bass is very, very punchy and crunchy, and you get this real like chest resonating feeling from it. It's really satisfying, very visceral, and just a real kind of punchy, impactful, bombastic time. Listening to Black Ice by Subtronics with the Ultrasonic, man, that bass was just meaty, crunchy, and solid. 
really, really fun. All that kind of bombastic mid bass and super warm punchiness that you get in the bass range, it does bleed and bloom a little bit into your mid range, but it's really not too bad, especially for a wireless earphone like this. Most wireless earphones I have tried are extremely veiled in the mid range, but these do a pretty commendable job of not bleeding or blooming too much in your mid range to what I would consider to be a pretty acceptable amount. They're not particularly mid range forward, nor are they particularly mid range detailed. The mid range does kind of take a back seat to the surrounding base range, but the mid range is not without some merit. You do get a decent amount of information there. It's really only the real nuances that you kind of miss in your mid range, but most everything you need to get in terms of information, you do have a tendency to get. It's just the really hypercritical stuff that you're having a difficult time picking up. Vocals really kind of peek out of that mid range though, while the mid range kind of feels like it's pushed a little bit, a little bit back. Vocals come a bit more forward coming out from that mid range. So they're a little bit more present. They're very warm and very relaxed, almost in an artificial sort of way, maybe just a little bit too far sometimes, but it, the result is definitely a very pleasing, very relaxed and overall a pretty enjoyable sounding vocal range. Well, maybe not sounding particularly clear and particularly clean or particularly natural is still very pleasant sounding. Where the ultrasonic gets a little funky for me is the high mids and treble. It's a little difficult to kind of distinguish the two because they seem to kind of blend together. There's really not a lot separating your high mids from your treble range. They just kind of like are one solid mass. And that's kind of, I think, because in both cases, there's a, a pretty noticeable roll off. And this means that the ultrasonics are a pretty dark sounding earphone overall, where you're just not getting a whole lot of treble resolution, a whole lot of trebles. You're getting really no sparkle up there. You're not really getting any shimmer or gleam from your treble range or your high mids. It's just a very rolled off, very soothed, relaxed, smoothed out treble range. And it makes it for a dark, but very relaxed and enjoyable sound. Very, very easy to listen to. They're super relaxed, but definitely not a very con clinical and hyper detailed sort of sound. Going into technicalities, your soundstage is noticeable. There's not a ton of it, but you do get less than just beaming directly into your ears. It's just a little bit of extra space here, a little bit of separation. It gives you this spatial awareness and a little bit of distance to give you this slightly less than medium level of soundstage. And imaging does a pretty good job. It's a little bit narrow. Uh, you don't really get this omnidirectional sense of imaging. It doesn't so much sound like everything is really detailed and precise around you. It's more like a cone shape out in front of you, but within that cone shape, the precision's pretty good. You're able to identify kind of stereo left and right pretty dang clearly with pretty good idea of where instrument placement is. It's just maybe not particularly great at getting the stuff behind you or high above you. In terms of dynamics, because of the real emphasis on the bass range here, you get plenty of smack and punch and kick in the low end. Your mid range is a little bit evened out, so not much going on there. And then your triple range is pretty, again, pretty rolled off, so you don't get a lot of energy on that end of it. So the dynamics here are a little bit on the subtle end, but you do get some energy in that low frequency range. So the low end, you got energy, but as you kind of climb up the frequency range, you start to lose a bit of energy and it just kind of teeters off once you get into the trouble range. So this means they're not maybe the most energetic sound overall, but they are on average, much more energetic, much more dynamic than most wireless earphones I have heard. Now let's talk the ear-free i5. The sound settings I use were ANC turned on at their maximum, and I use the pop EQ profile. Starting out, there's not as much bass extension in the ear freeze as there are in the ultrasonics. It is more than you get out of most wireless earphones, but just doesn't quite reach the sub bass snap and hit that you get from the ultrasonics. It's, it's decent, it's still pretty good, just not quite as far reaching. The mid bass is pretty similar to that of the ultrasonics, especially with that kind of resonator in your chest sort of visceral feeling. You really do achieve that still with the ear freeze, but overall the mid bass is a bit better well controlled with the ear freeze where it's not bleeding or blooming as much. It's still getting in there a little bit, but it just it's more controlled in its range. It's more kind of a mature sort of delivery of that mid bass 
while I'll still, again, giving you this really deep, impactful, visceral resonation in your chest. Where the ear freeze do really shine though is in that mid-range. The mid-range is a lot more forward with the ear free i5 than it is with the ultrasonic. And you are, all the kind of nuances that I felt I was missing from the ultrasonic, I am getting here with the ear free. So that's really nice. It's, it, it's just the whole mid-range in general is, a, is more forward. You get a lot more information. You just feel a lot more presence there, a lot more impact there. It's just a lot more of a nuanced mid-range than you got from the ultrasonic. The vocal range similarly is also a little bit more forward than it is in the ultrasonic, but rather than being a little bit artificially too warm, they kind of go the other way with it and are a little bit too artificially bright. Yeah, you get a bit more kind of detail and clarity and maybe even a little bit more nuance or at least the sense of nuance in the vocal range, but accompanying that is this artificial brightness that kind of gives, especially like higher male vocals, this layer of like metallic-y texture to them that is a little distracting. But I suppose overall, comparing the two directly, the ear freeze probably sounds just a little bit more natural, if not a little too robotically metallic-y textured. Another thing that the ear free i5 does to its benefit is that your high mids are a lot more distinct from your treble range. They don't feel like they're kind of melded together like they do on the ultrasonic. They feel more separated. You definitely have this feeling of gradual climb in the frequency. So your high mids feel more defined, more present, and a bit more kind of isolated from your treble range. You get a little bit of kind of a little bit more texture in there, a little bit more kind of, again, a little more nuance so that it is a bit more identified. And similarly, Going into the treble range, it's not as rolled off. It's still rolled off a little bit, but it's not as significant as it is in the ultrasonic. So for me, it meant that I was able to get some more kind of that sparkle and shimmer at the top end that I felt I was missing from the ultrasonic. So that's a pretty big win for ear free right there. Going into technicalities, the ear free does offer a little bit more soundstage than the ultrasonic, which gives you this bigger sense of space and a little bit more air. And imaging is now omnidirectional. It's not this cone in front of you. It is all around you, you hear it behind you, above you, pretty much everywhere. So it's a lot more kind of a realistic feeling of imaging. It maybe isn't quite as super precise forward imaging like you get out of the ultrasonic where it is that cone in front of you. So you feel like you're really getting a good sense of stuff right there in front of you. But with this, with the ear free, it's all around you. And that precision of the imaging and the placement and the separation and, and the overall layering that you get is a lot more immersive. And I would say is just overall a, a better approach for imaging, especially in a wireless earphone like this. And because the frequency overall is a little bit better balanced in the ear free than it is with the ultrasound, your dynamics are a bit more engaging as well. That bass range isn't so veiling and you do have some uh, quite a bit more treble energy on the other end. So dynamics feel a lot more kind of snappy and fun and are just really, really energetic across the board. One characteristic that I wanna point out that both of these have is that while they're both pretty dang excellent when it comes to listening to music, they're not great for media consumption, playing games or watching movies. In both cases with both earphones, with similar settings, I ran into the problem where watching movies or watching videos or playing narrative-driven games where there's lots of dialogue, the voices in the dialogue, for whatever reason, sounded really, really artificial, very distorted and with a little bit of a very noticeable sort of reverb to them. Not great. I didn't I didn't like it very much. So I didn't I can't really recommend these for media consumption. But for whatever reason, that sort of feeling, that sort of distortion and wobbliness in the vocals and dialogue that I got from movies, videos, and games is not present when you're listening to music. So I'm not sure why that is, but yes. Listen to music, you do not get that characteristic in either one of these. Go figure. So I admit that I'm being a little bit extra critical about these particular earphones. And that's because these are kind of maybe some of the best sounding earphones, wireless earphones that I have heard, despite my criticisms, despite my kind of clinical examples I'm providing you. So 
I'm being nitpicky about it. And I have to, because at the end of the day, both of these really do sound great when it comes to wireless earphones. They, they are probably some of, if not the best sounding wireless earphones that we've had here in the studio, especially in this price range. $75, they do an excellent job, a genuinely great job. And sure, it might not be for everyone, it might not be for everything, every kind of media you wanna be listening to, but when it comes to music, just kind of pick your flavor. Do you want something a lot more warm and bass heavy, or do you want something a bit more clinical, a bit more balanced? Also, you gotta decide on your aesthetic here. I have to give full credit to Moondrop for making a very cool looking package here. These are very, very neat, very unique. And the whole theme here works. It is a very thematic design and package altogether between the look, the colors, the design, and even the waifu AI voice built into it. And in contrast, the ear freeze are just really, really elegant looking, really simple, minimalist, and in terms of functionality, just really easy to use. So just kind of pick your flavor and go for it. They're both genuinely really good for what they are, but they have room for improvement. But anyway, that's about it. I hope that you enjoyed this. I'll see you again soon.